Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're in Casablanca, Morocco for the don'ts of visiting Morocco. We've had a great time visiting here, people have been super nice, even there's places I really like to enjoy to go to, there's always some don'ts you should know about before you go. So here are don'ts of Morocco. And the first don't I have for you is, there's a lot of beautiful mosques around the country, but as a tourist, don't think you can go into the mosque. Access to the mosque is strictly for Muslims. However, there is one very big exception, the Hassan the Second Mosque here in Casablanca, which is really worth visiting because it is gorgeous, it actually does tours. You can go and check out, it is just beautiful to see, but that's one thing you should know. Another thing I think it would kind of do with the religion is also on Fridays, don't expect everything to be going all day long on Fridays because Friday is the holy day here. So some places, maybe shops might be closed or shorter hours and stuff like that, you know, a place like Marrakesh and Casablanca, you won't notice so much, but it is one of those things you might want to consider. Also, if you do hear the call for prayer, take a pause, okay? Don't try to bargain, don't try to like buy stuff and things like that. Just take a moment of respect when you hear that, and it's really kind of a nice thing. So you hear and you're like, wow, when you hear the call to prayer is really a really cool experience you have when you are here. Now, some tourist don'ts I have for you that you might want to know when you come here is one, when you fly in, don't expect to get through customs quickly. Look, customs takes a long time when you get here to Morocco because they're going to actually write a tourist number into your passport that you're going to use when you go to hotels and register and stuff like that. So it does take some time, okay? So don't be surprised if you do get through quickly if your ride isn't there because they're expected to take you a couple hours maybe to get through if it goes faster than that. So just a heads up. Also with that airport, don't think you can check in online when you are traveling here. You will probably have to check in at the airport so just a heads up for that one also a flying don't i have for you is don't bring your drones you're not allowed to bring drones into morocco and fly them around so if you have them you might get them confiscated at the border or at the checkpoints and stuff like that so just have a heads up for that all right now let's move into the cities now what are some don'ts you want to have here well one don't you need to realize is when you're here in morocco don't expect not to haggle. I mean, when you're in the souks and the medinas and stuff like that, it is all about bargaining, bargaining, and bargaining some more. That's how it works here. People aren't really trying to scam you. That's just how it works. And so what I'd say is, if you're gonna be bargaining, realize that the first price they give you, pay between 25 to 50% less than what they start with. Okay, so you do have that. Though I will say one of the biggest probably bargaining scams kind of things you might hear about is actually with taxis that are here. And so I would say is don't forget to bargain with your taxi driver because you want to negotiate the price before you get in. So when you're going someplace, it's kind of already set. That's why if you're going to go to your hotel or your Riyadh or someplace, ask them what the price should be. So you have kind of like the upper limit that you need to negotiate and make sure you get under to give you some ideas. And with that is, I guess with that 25, 50% you know, kind of discount kind of thing, a next one is don't ever take the first price as the last price in bargaining situations. Because another don't I have for you is don't think that you can bargain everything here. If you're going to a normal store, like if you're here in Casablanca, this is a financial economic capital, so it's actually a relatively new city. So you're not negotiating when you're going to Zara and stuff like that to buy clothes and things. That's more of a straightforward purchase. So you don't always bargain, but when you do know the places, do bargain when you can. Now, another thing I have for you with money is one, don't think you can use your credit cards everywhere. Even if they have the signs, sometimes they might not like taking that kind of credit card. So do have a heads up for that because you do need to have cash when you're here. Cash is king and definitely king when it comes to negotiations here in Morocco, okay? So have cash, but also don't forget to get small bills because you're going to be tipping people all the time and you need to have small bills to tip or coins and things like that. And when you go to the ATM, it gives you like 200 and 100, so like 20s and $10 or euros. So, and you don't need that much so make sure you can break some of that or don't forget to break some so you can actually have some to tip people because the reason why you need those smaller bills is don't expect people to have change whether it's taxis or negotiating or shopping and stuff like that you'll be surprised how many times you hear oh no change, sorry, can't help. And sometimes it's true, sometimes who knows, but that's why you wanna have the smaller bills just so you can kind of negotiate to those points. Because if you don't, well, then you might be paying an extra 50, you know, dirham higher than you should, okay? So we're gonna go see some more of Casablanca to finish this, but I had to show this because this Hassan the Second Mosque is just gorgeous. And the tour, you have to do it, okay? You have to, it is amazing.
So we're here on Corniche now, and some other don'ts I want to talk about. Actually, you see the water behind me. One of the things is you don't drink the water when you are here in Morocco. I mean, you can brush your teeth and stuff, but drink bottled water. That's a better idea for you when you are here. Another bathroom thing I'd say is don't forget to bring some toilet paper with you. Look, not all public toilets will have toilet paper there. You might see a lady outside when you go in that'll be like standing there and you're like, oh, do I tip her when I go in or out? She's the one that might have the toilet paper. So what I recommend is bring yourself some Kleenex packets with you so you always have some with you, okay? Also, sometimes the public toilets, it is the kind of squat toilets. So just be ready for that, okay? So some other safety things I'd wanna warn you about for don'ts is one, don't forget, you take your life in your own hands when you cross the street and going on rides and stuff like that because the traffic here is a bit crazy so make sure you're taking extra special precautions and paying attention when you are crossing the street and you're, you're driving around and things like that but it's also not just like in the cities and stuff but also the medinas you need to pay attention to because there's donkeys going by with construction equipment and there's mopeds going by and bikes and motorcycles and stuff so make sure you stay to the side of the medina don't just wander and be all willy-nilly when you go through because you need to pay attention also don't think that everybody in the Medina is going to be your friend. There are some pickpockets out there in the really busy Medinas like Marrakesh and Fez. So do have a heads up for that one, okay? And when you're in the Medina, my next tone for you is don't freak out when you get lost. I'm not saying don't freak out if you get lost. I'm telling you don't freak out when you get lost because it does happen. That's why always take your map with you, always have your GPS with you so you'll be okay. If you're not sure, ask for the shopkeepers where to go. They will help you even if you're not buying something, so do have a heads up for that one. And a few other don'ts when you are in the Medina. One, don't think that the argan oil or the saffron they're selling you in the Medina is actually the real deal. If you do buy argan oil, put it in the freezer for about four hours. You'll see it. If it starts to separate, that means they mix different oils together, okay? Also, with the saffron, when you put it in water, it should turn kind of gold color, not red. The red is the dye they put on there for that, so do have a heads up. Also, a little safety thing, a tiny one before we leave Corniche here, is also don't pet the stray cats. Look, you will see tons and tons and tons of stray cats here in Morocco. Don't pet them, all right? You just want to stay away from them. I know they're cute. I know they're adorable, but just don't, all right? So we'll head to another part of Casablanca to do some more don'ts. So now we're here on the balcony of our hotel to give you some of the don'ts in terms of scams and stuff like that you should look out for here in Morocco. One thing I'd say is don't trust that everybody that's trying to help you is really trying to help you to just your benefit, okay? Just always have your eyes open and your mind open when people are offering your help or inviting you to do things. Now, I'm not saying there's like everyone's trying to rip you off. That's the next note is don't think people are always trying to rip you off. But just know is when I've talked to travelers that have come here, a lot of them have mentioned, you know, I felt like there was everyone's kind of playing an angle or something. And when you're looking at the taxis, one thing I would say is don't think that all taxis are the same. Uh, one thing is like, for example, here in, in Casablanca, you're gonna see red taxis, little red taxis. And don't be surprised here in Casablanca if someone else hops in your taxi as you go. Cause that's kind of the thing here in Casablanca. Other parts of Morocco, you might not have, you, you won't have that, okay? Now, another don't I have for you is, don't think that the grand in grand taxi means great and fancy. All it means is big, okay? So if you got a family of four, you need to take that grand taxi, okay? To, to have the space for it. And if you're gonna be taking a grand taxi to go to another town, it just means they're gonna get a lot more people in that taxi, so you're gonna be a little little tight for your space, just, just so you have a heads up for that one. One little add-on with the trains here in Morocco, don't think that you can buy your tickets online unless you have a Moroccan credit card. Other, if you do have one, fine, you're fine. Otherwise, just go to the train station a couple days before you want to go, and you should be fine be able to get a ticket that way, but uh, don't think you can do it just with your American Express. You might need to have a Moroccan bank card, okay? And with all the things out there, I think there's one thing you need to know is don't forget to tip when you are here in Morocco, because tipping is part of the culture here. So if you are getting your bags taken somewhere and a guy's push them in the big cart. Yes, you're gonna tip that person. Or they're bringing your bags up, or someone's helping you as a guide, or showing you where to go. People do kind of expect a tip here, so have the small coins like I talked about before. Have the small bills so you can tip people because you do need to do that when you're here. That's how people, that's how somebody will make a living here. Another thing they'll kind of go off of that, actually with the tipping and the coins is, don't forget that you need to tip 
if you're going to be having your picture taken with the snake charmers or the monkey yeah, handlers or those kind of things in the market because again that's how they make a living so don't just try to take the pictures and run off oh no no they'll come after you and they'll want their tip okay so don't forget that another thing as a tourist don't just take pictures of people you need to make sure that you actually ask people if it's okay and they might say no they might say yes or they might say oh for a tip there could be that so just have a heads up for it a few cultural faux pas i want you to watch out for one thing it is is you don't use your left hand a lot of times for important situations here in morocco do all your stuff your handshake and things like that with your right hand another thing is if you're invited to someone's house don't wear your shoes in people's homes you always take them off when you go in there so you do have a heads up for that also if you do go come here to casablanca and you go to the hassan second mosque don't wear your shoes in there either don't worry they won't let you they'll give you a bag to put them in but just have a heads up for that now when you're going out to eat here you're gonna see the word tagine a lot of times you go man they just eat tagine all the time my dope for the tagine is don't think that tagine is one dish tagine is actually the the pot that they cook in you know when they bring your, your food, it's got that like pot with a triangle on top or the pyramid on top, they take off? That pot, that's the tagine, okay? The thing is, the tagines here can be very, very, they're fantastic. We've had great rabbit, we've had great meatballs, we've had great beef, great chicken and lemon. Oh my God, it's so good. You have all kind of different tagines that actually come. So don't think that tagine is just one thing. That is one thing I have noticed a lot of people think that it's all just one. No, no, no. There's a lot of different things inside the tagine. And what's great about those tagines and great about Morocco in general, if you're a vegetarian, Morocco is a great place for you. So if you're a vegetarian, don't worry about going hungry when you're in Morocco. There's all kinds of great vegetable tagines you can have. I know we've actually ordered some to ourselves as a main meal, and it's been wonderful, okay? So you're cool there. Another don't I'll say when you're going out to eat is, don't get in a hurry, all right? Service takes some time for them to come give you the menus, to come take your order, to bring your food and stuff like that. It does take some time, so just have some patience when you're there. So if you're traveling with your kids here and they're starting to get hungry, I would go to eat earlier versus later because it's not like you're gonna sit down and the food's there right away. Now, the bread will be, the bread will be there very quickly because they love their bread here. But the normal meal might take a little bit of time, okay? Now, what's cool though is one of the things I really like about Morocco is don't worry about busting your budget. Now, I'm not saying Morocco is cheap. What I am saying is Morocco is a very affordable country. Hotels, restaurants, tours, things like that are fairly priced and you can negotiate a lot of things down too, so that's really cool. But I know that my, my buddy, my wallet, he's very happy on our Morocco trip and is very sad that we're heading out tomorrow going to Western Europe because he's like, no, we were saving so much money. So there is that. Now, another thing I've seen with some tourists getting upset about was about the Sahara Desert Tours or the Desert Tours. You want to be careful. What I want to tell you is don't think that the Sahara Desert is everywhere in Morocco. I mean, it's kind of far away from here in Casablanca. If you're in Marrakesh, you're looking at an eight to 10 hour car ride down to the Sahara and then throw in the four hour train ride or three and a half hour, four hour train ride from Casablanca down to Marrakesh onto that. It's going to take you a while to get there. And a lot of tourists don't realize that. And so when people say, oh, we'll give you the desert tour, well, it might not be the Sahara Desert. It might just be the desert that's by where they're at, okay? Or they might just have you go to the mountains or go ride a camel somewhere. And I have heard a lot of tourists getting upset with that. So just have a heads up. Don't think the Sahara is close. It's far away. But also, don't think Morocco is something you can do in one visit. Morocco is a huge country. There's four different regions here. You've got the mountains, you've got the plains, you've got the coast, and you've got the desert, the Sahara Desert. And what I'd recommend is just choose one or two of the regions and focus on those on your vacation. Otherwise, you'll be spending a ton of time in the trains or a grand taxi and stuff like that instead of spending time enjoying the Medinas, enjoying the people and the food and things like that, okay? The thing I want to wrap up with is if you are a female traveler and you're coming to Morocco, I will say is don't expect that female travelers are treated the same as male travelers when they are here. So do have a heads up for that. I would recommend dressing a little bit more conservatively when you're here. Also, you know, with bargaining and stuff like that. I know Jocelyn's been upset that she had less bargaining like sway than I did and stuff like that. So do have a heads up for it. Don't let that keep you from coming to Morocco, but I do want to give you the heads up for it. 
Anyway, I hope this helped you know a little bit more about Morocco before you come so you know the things you shouldn't do before you do come here, because you should definitely come to Morocco, whether you're hitting the Medina and Fez, or you're seeing a blue city, or you're going down to Marrakesh, you're hitting the Sahara, or you're flying in and out of here in Casablanca. We really hope you have a great time here in Morocco. If you want to learn more, 10 things that shock tourists when they come to Morocco, maybe the five love and hates of going to Marrakesh, or just maybe with some general advice, what to know before you come to Morocco. Check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions, and we hope you have a great time here in Morocco, but I'm pretty sure you will, because I know we have. So, bye from Casablanca.